Everything started in 1994. It was a terrible fall, dark sky, non-stopping rains. Yards were empty. Kids preferred to stay home rather than play on muddy pitches. One day, my father brought me the greatest technological wonder I've seen in my life. At least, that's what I thought back then. Pegasus. A small white box you could hook to your TV and play games. My family couldn't afford buying me a home computer back then, so it was my first experience with video games. I was astonished by the fact that I could control a character on a screen. A week later, my best friend got a Pegasus as a present for his birthday, followed by a few other boys from my class. We often traded games, chipped in for new titles we'd seen on the street market, since it was the only place where we could buy games, and visit one another spending whole evenings playing Super Mario or Contra. I stopped playing Pegasus three years later when I got a PC as a Christmas present. I was shocked again, this time by the quality of the graphics, and I quickly forgot about my previous system. A few years later, when I finally managed to beg my father to install an internet connection, I learned the truth about my most precious childhood toy. Pegasus was just a cheap Taiwanese rip-off of the Famicom, a console better known in the West as the Nintendo Entertainment System, sold along bootleg games manufactured in some former Soviet republic. Yeah, all boys countrywide got nuts about a decade-old device running pirated games, but we had no idea about it back then. The hours of playing games on my TV are one of my best childhood memories. But still, there was one event I keep thinking about even today. It was a few months after my dad bought me the console. I was bored with the games I had and wanted something new. I managed to save a bit for my pocket money, so I decided to visit a street market on my way back home from school. Since there was no way to test the game before purchasing, I used to choose the game by the sticker on the cartridge. My favorite seller had a simple pricing scheme. Popular games with a catchy sticker were the most expensive, more average looking were a little cheaper, while Cartridges with some weird sticker, or even without it, were the least expensive. I quickly counted my funds and realized I could only afford the cheapest alternative. I went with a yellow cart with a dark brown sticker, on which a blue circle plus a sign and TTT TT4 colon was printed. I couldn't figure out what it could mean, but since the sticker often didn't match a game, I thought it couldn't be that bad. I went back home and immediately tried to insert my new game into Pegasus. Didn't fit. I quickly realized that the cartridge shell was larger than usual. There was no screw on the back, so it was impossible to disassemble it into two halves, as it could be done with any other game. It was a problem since I couldn't put it into my console. I took a risk and smashed the cartridge shell with a hammer, trying not to damage a circuit board inside. Success! I carefully inserted the circuit into a slot. Another disappointment. After turning Pegasus on and turning my TV to the proper channel, I saw only the black screen. Zero reaction. I removed the circuit board, wiped it with a piece of cloth, blew it, cleaned the inside port of the console, but there was no effect. Eventually, I accidentally pressed reset, and to my surprise, some tune began to play, and I saw a title screen. Out of sheer curiosity, I removed the game and tried to turn it on again. Conventional way this time. It displayed a black screen that didn't work until I pressed reset. I thought it was some strange glitch, but I was so excited about playing my newly bought game. I ignored it and started to play. The gameplay wasn't anything special. As far as I remember, the player controlled some short guy with a spear killing snakes on trees. The problem was that always, after about five minutes, sound stopped. Often some minor graphical glitches started to appear and... Then the game simply froze. Hampered gameplay a lot, so I never got far. Graphics weren't very good. Same for animations and sounds. I can't give you any content, plot, or even title, because the whole text was displayed in some... Asian language, most likely Chinese. The game ended up being played from time to time when I was really, really bored. Usually I stopped playing very quickly due to technical problems, but one day I discovered something new. There was one spot in the game where the player had to jump from one branch to another. The character was able to jump quite far, so it shouldn't be a problem for a skilled gamer. Once my finger slipped on the button and I accidentally jumped way too early. 
I was heading towards the pit between the branches. I should have fallen down, but instead the character stopped on the empty space between trees, as it was a solid ground. A second later, all graphics glitched up and the music stopped. I kept pressing the jump button, hoping it would somehow fix the game. As a result, a black screen appeared and disappeared. A moment later, I heard a loud beep and column of text appeared on the screen. I didn't know the language it was written in. I had no idea what I'd found. I pressed the jump button again, and another beep was heard, and text wall was replaced with another text wall. I pressed again, another wall of text. After the third time, a black and white map and some names and a few spots marked with red. I kept pressing the jump button, and new maps kept appearing on the screen. Up to this point, I was almost sure I'd discovered some secret hidden by the developers. But then another map was displayed. Since I was always interested in geography, I quickly recognized that one. It was showing the Black Sea region. Flashing Red Point was located on a border between Russia and Georgia. Then another text wall appeared. Jump. Small text wall. Some graphic. It was a man's face. Looking like a mugshot. It was pixelated, but I guess it'd be enough to recognize a man. Below the photo... Four small skulls, slightly bigger than single letters, were displayed next to each other. Jump. Black screen. Three beeps. That was it. Black screen. No reaction. I was staring at the TV with my mouth widely opened. I couldn't believe what I'd seen. When I pulled together, I restarted the console to see those weird things again, this time with a calm mind. The game, however, appeared to be broken. When I tried to play, the game crashed after a few seconds. A week later, it didn't even start at all. Later, I just threw it away as broken and useless. Years after that, I kept thinking about what happened that afternoon. I assume now that most likely this cart was meant to be an encrypted data storage device for criminals, or even some terrorist or seditious group. By some strange coincidence, it hadn't reached its destination, but instead it found its way to Central Europe with a batch of other games, and ended up in the hands of a boy who looked for a way to spend an afternoon.